Hello everyone, it is Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon. Today we're looking at a Articuno, Blastoise, and Magikarp Wailord tag team deck. I think this is a really fun rogue trying to build up a big Magikarp and Wailord to do big Super Splash knockouts or Towering Splash to completely wipe the field off the opponent's board. There's some really nice cards in here. Uh, I really love the Articuno. I think this is one of these cards that currently is a little... Uh, under the radar, uh, but when we get the right attacker for this guy, uh, this Blizzard Veil into Cold Cyclone combination gets very, very strong. And if we have some good water support eventually, this card's going to be very powerful. So it's one to sort of keep in, in mind for future cards that get released because we actually have a lot of good water support with Aquapatch, Quagsire, Volcanion, Articuno, Magikarp Wailord, Blastoise being one as well. So there's this weird sense right now where there's lots and lots of good water support but not quite an attacker to break it. This deck right now is trying to take advantage of Magikarp and Werelord and also using Onyx for some type coverage. Um, I don't think it's top tier. I think it's, you know, a really fun rogue that we can, you know, have a couple really good matchups against uh, some decks, especially things like Malamar I feel we're pretty strong against. We can have a reasonable Zapdos Jirachi matchup. Um, and with the Onyx and two Stretcher, we can give ourselves a chance against some of the likes of Picarom and Zoroark. But it's not super favoured, of course. But um, for a stage two deck, it's not the worst one out there. And this is obviously just a really fun deck to play. Saying no to people with Articuno, just protecting your board at the back and building up a huge attacker. Similar to a Groudon uh, deck from Expanded, where you just simply deny your opponent from gusting up your stuff means that you can just get towards this big towering splash without the opponent having any interaction with you at all. There's a lot to be said about that, and it's very strong. So let's have a look at this archetype, how we can try and build it, and the card decisions within the deck. So first of all, the four Articuno. It's our optimal lead, and that's because of its ability Blizzard Veil. As long as this Pokemon is your active, whenever your opponent plays a supporter card from hand, prevent all effects of that card done to your benched water Pokemon. That means that Blastoise can't be picked off and um, Magikarp and Werelord can't be touched either. So whenever there's an Articuno active, we're going to try and defend our guys in the back. This synergizes so well with its own attack called Cyclone. For two water, you do 70 and move two water from this to one of your bench. So essentially, we're retaining energy the whole time. Your opponent can't gust your water stuff. So if you Articuno, put the energies back onto a Werelord or another Articuno, your opponent can't touch those energies. So we're constantly growing our energy count towards either these big attacks of Super Splash or towards Towering Splash. So that's pretty much the whole emphasis of the deck. We're going to use Cold Cyclone a bunch in the early turns. Doing 70 is reasonable uh, pressure. Knocks out Jirachis, knocks out uh, non-evolving, or sorry, evolving basics. It can two-shot the likes of Zapdos and stuff. So it's not too bad overall. I think it's a nice little attack to get some pressure on the board to kick things off, which is pretty good. Whilst this whole time we're just building towards big damage attacks. The further way that we increase our energy count is through this Blastoise line. Power Squall is the ability. Once during your turn, you may look at the top six cards of your deck and attach any number of water energy cards you find there to your Pokemon in any way that you like and shuffle the other cards back into your deck. So it's like a Max Elixir of the past, but we can attach as many water as we find in that top six as possible. We play 15 energy and two Recycler, so the idea is that we can see a lot and we're going to get a lot of energy acceleration going on top of this. Hopefully it means that we can chain our Cold Cyclone attacks, even if Articuno is not knocked out. We move two to the back and then we Power Squall and hopefully, you know, manually attach on top of that. And we can get a second Cold Cyclone off, uh, you know, in a turn. So that's the idea. And it also has Hydro Tackle. It does 150 for three water. You do three on yourself. Not too great, but it's kind of a chunky Pokemon that also could be awkward for some Zapdos players. So do bear that in mind. It's something that we can go for if we have to. Um... Quick notes on the Squirtle. We're going to have the Floating Shell Squirtle. Uh, just because we play three Brooklet in here, which synergizes so brilliantly with water stuff. Uh, and it means that we have a free retreat pivot, as long as we find that Brooklet Hill. Meaning that we have pretty much eight good leads in the deck, with the four Articuno, the three Squirtle, and the one Volk Prism. Uh, those are all like reasonable leads for the deck. You just don't want to start a Magikarp Werelord, basically, because it pressurizes you to find lots of Blastoise early, basically. But this ability is a nice little thing to get us into Articuno, to then protect him from future turns, which is really nice for us. Volcanium Prism offers Jet Geyser, which is a fantastic ability. Uh, you can discard a water from hand if you do. Your opponent switches their active. This can buy you some time and just move stuff out of the way that you can't deal with. Uh, it can help you get around the likes of Jolteon using a Swift Run. 
Um, it also has Sauna Blast that does 100 for 3 water and 20 to each of your opponent's bench. This is a fantastic attack, really important in the deck as well, helping this towering splash knock out a whole field of things all at once, because you can put 20 damages on the likes of Zapdos, um, anything evolving into like 120 hit point um, stage 1s, like Garbodors and stuff. Um, it's also going to be important for um, setting up damage on like buzz walls and things like that. So the Sauna Blast is a really big deal and it, in its own right can be doing, you know, early pressure knockouts as well. So do bear that in mind. It can be really, really awesome to set up the Magikarp and Werelords numbers. Also just setting up numbers for like um, the Jolteon GX to be knocked out by Super Splash or set up things like Ultra Necrozma as well. Bear that in mind. The 20 spread is oftentimes going to be a real math fixer in this build especially because I don't play choice bands, so this guy is even more important in this list. From there, we have uh, finally the two Magikarp and Werelords. I've already mentioned his attacks. We know how powerful this is in Expanded with Archie Stoice because it's real easy to get these attacks rolling. In this deck, it's a little bit slower to get him going, but when you do, the power is still here. Super Splash knocking out a lot of things. Towering Splash being huge against non-GX decks, like absolutely huge. Amazing, amazing attacker against the non-GX decks. Definitely something that you build towards in a lot of matchups and his hit points is Mammoth, so difficult to get through. He normally sticks on the board if you start swinging with him. From there, we have the one Onyx, Land Crush, just a vanilla, 120 for four colorless. When we have the acceleration that we do, we have Brooklet Hill search ability for this card. It just makes sense that you can just power up an Onyx out of nowhere, knock out a Picarom or knock out a Zoroark. It's going to be a nice little prize trade. And we have energy recyclers in here anyway, so we can hopefully recycle the Onyx with these couple cards and get value out of him for some big up trades. Then we just have one Lele for Wonder Tagging. Um, pretty big deal because we want to have as much consistency as possible. Uh, we're not, you know, huge on support account and we're not huge on ball search count either. So it's really important to just increase our odds for early turns because this deck is fairly fragile in the early turns. Until you start power squalling, the deck can be a little bit clunky, but similar to like a Vika Vault deck, really. Once you start thinning your deck of energy cards, it gets really, really strong. So that's the idea here. Onto the item cards, we have two Stretcher, hopefully recycling like early Squirtles or Articunos if we have to. Obviously, recycling Onyx is big in some key matchups. Two Energy Recycler, just getting these energies back into the deck to give you better odds of Power Squall to get energies back onto the field. Two Pokecom is really nice when we're playing this Stage 2 line and also helping us have better odds for Lele. So this is always something that I like in the deck. Uh, four copies of Rare Candy and four Ultra Ball, all pretty self-explanatory cards. Three Brooklet Hills. Whoops, I really like the high count of Brooklet Hill because we uh, we have that synergy with Squirtle. So not only is it similar to just finding Nest Ball early on for getting Squirtles on the board initially, it means if we start the Squirtle, we can go ahead and grab ourselves off Kuno and simply retreat out of the Squirtle and protect it as I try and log back in right now. Then we have our supporter cards. Oh, there we go. We have uh, two Bills Analysis in the deck. Um, I think this is a reasonable card. I think I prefer it to something like an Erica's Hospitality in here, um, simply because in the early turns, it can still be digging out things like Brooklet Hills um, and Ultra Balls, which is important for the deck to grab Squirtles in the initial phases, whereas Erica is really poor in the initial start of the game. Um, and this is where we're most fragile. We're really fragile in our early game because we need to hit those basics pretty quickly. Um, so Bills does help out in that regard, uh, but also sort of mid-game, he can help dig out rare candies and again, more ball search to make sure we can get multiple stoys. And this guy gets really strong once you start using Power Squall because our deck is basically just Pokemon and uh, trainers left. So he does get very good once we've got a couple of Blastoise into play as well. So reasonable early, pretty strong late game for helping us push that second Blastoise or third Blastoise onto the board. That's the idea of the Bills. Two copies of Guzma, trying to gust things is still going to be important. If we do start one of our awkward leads, they are chunky. Four retreat on both this guy and this guy. So that's a big yikes. So having Guzma to pivot us out of there is important. And also making sure we can pick off big targets on our opponent's board is going to be a big deal as well. And then just four Cynthia, four Lily, um, just for the consistency aspect of the deck, which is pretty standard overall. From there, 15 water energy. We want to have lots in deck, in hand. And uh, being able to recycle as well is going to be important. Um, so yeah, 15 is going to be the count. So we can have good squalling odds to get lots of energies into play. Because all of our attacks are pretty expensive. So that all uh, makes sense. I think for cards that you could consider in the build, I think Choice Band's kind of one of the things that I think is a little bit cheeky of me not to play. Um, I could definitely see them being important in the build. But for now, I'm just trying to get the Blastoise into play in the first place. That's the biggest deal. Also, you could consider dropping... 
uh, like a stretcher and a comm just to go thicker on Squirtle Stoice if you really want to. Um, giving yourself an extra good starter is always a good thing, and having like a physical blast dice is fairly comparable to dropping a Pokecom. The only thing it's weaker for is Lele odds turn one, so that's the build as it is right now. I'm sure there will be some other water type attackers that you want to um, go with um, in the future. For now, these are the best that we have to pick from. You can think about adding in a Lapras if you really want to, Lapras GX. Um, but I feel it's not all that important. It's kind of like halfway house, and when we don't play choice band, the Articuno's math, oh sorry, the Lapras's math isn't all that strong, so let's jump into the ladder and have a few games with this fun deck. I think as far as rogue decks goes, this one actually has some genuine win conditions. Um, it loves seeing Malamar decks, that's its like favourite matchup I would say. Um, and with that little tech fighting Pokemon, we have the surprise factor that we can one bomb some stuff sometimes, which is nice. Ah, oh, we are up against Malamar. One of our stronger matchups, as long as we don't brick. <laughs> that's kind of the concern for this deck, that that's a factor. <clears throat> Let's see now. Malamar does have one hit KO potential, obviously, but um, if we can use our Wear Lord, we get rid of all the Malamars at once because they all have 90 hit points, and that's uh, just a huge swing in our favor. Uh, we even pick up Water Energy, which is pretty much the only thing we were missing from this turn one hand. Uh, against the Malamar, we're not super concerned that an Articuno is going to get knocked out, so I think we can just go ahead and grab the second Squirtle here. We prize one Articuno, we have an Onyx, which isn't a big deal in this matchup. We prize a Stoice. We prized a rare candy. We have a Stoice in hand. Oh no, we haven't prized a Stoice, it's in hand. What am I talking about? 11, 12, we prize three energy. Okay. Let's go grab this guy, let's do this. Let's get the full value from Lily while we can. Lots more energy cards. Magic Up from Werelord is something we definitely build around in this matchup. So we'll put him down and just pass. We don't want to get hit with a Let Loose because our hand is very strong for turn two. Let Loose is a big problem for this archetype. Obviously, we are stage two reliant. So something to bear in mind. They're going to go ahead and play an Ultra Ball here. Get rid of a Guzma. Obviously not doing too much in this matchup. That's one thing that's really huge against like Zapdos players as well. Denying them Guzma is so awkward because it's a lot of their outs to moving their own Zapdos to chain attacks. The matchup against Zapdos is a little bit more difficult if they are playing the Jolteon though because Jolteon doesn't have to keep moving in and out of the active and it just needs Electro Power to get through Articuno. Because one big downside of this card is it's not weak to Metal, it's weak to Lightning unfortunately. Our opponent is going to retreat into their Jirachi and just Stella Wish currently lacking in K, but they are going to go ahead and grab Nest Ball off the Stella Wish. And they're just going to pass it over to us, which is cool. We've already got that guaranteed Articuno knockout. I'm going to grab my next Articuno as well. We're going to Rare Candy do this. Power School, I think, before... So we're going to power school before the bill, because I think it's more important for us to try and find a second Stoice than it is to find more energy cards, because we're already ready to attack with. So we're going to hit two energy regardless, which is pretty good. Uh, we can go here. Start building towards this Magikarp Werelord. There's Pokecom backup stadium. Yeah, I think this is fine. Pokecom synergizes with Stretcher if this gets response KO'd, but they have no energy on the board, so we're not really looking down another knockout from our opponent, really. We can take the first prize here. Move to energy to our other Articuno, just to be safe. Picking up Ultra Ball's not bad. I believe War Turtle was in deck. They're going to put down another Inke, evolving to Malamar, skateboard the active. 
We know they can't take a knockout this turn, though. They're going to find themselves a Tina, which they can start powering up. Even if this Marsh Shadow Sponge is a hit, we can uh, we can set it up for a Towering Splash anyway. So instead, he's just going to feed us an NK. That makes sense. Otherwise, it would just get caught in a Towering Splash regardless. But feeding us prizes, especially Malamars, is scary for him. Because if he doesn't put enough Malamars down, we can just knock him out with the Werelord and he's not going to respond. Okay. Uh, I think we can take this as well. Yeah. Seems good. We're going to squall. Getting one energy is all we need for our prize. Pretty nice. For Bill. We can multiple away the comma at this point. Prize number two for us. Strange when this deck is actually winning a race. But hey ho. We have six energy on the board turn two. That's not too bad. Gonna see a Cynthia from our opponent. They finally have a Giratina ready to attack us. Then I'm gonna nest ball out another Inke. And they're gonna shut out Impact. So this turn, I think Guzma hit the. Marshadow means that we have five prizes ready for us to Towering Splash. Alternative is just attack this and then save Guzma. Yeah, that's actually stronger. Yep. That's stronger. What am I talking about? We have game a good amount of times next turn. Uh, we should probably play this. We don't need these anymore. Vice number two coming a little late to the party. Nothing there. Nothing there. Whoops. Seven. It's a little awkward because we might need to jet geyser. Next turn. We don't have to. It's if we get... Only if, only a problem if we get uh, let loose. Slightly different to the expanded build. Not quite the same power in this Blastoise, but still getting the job done. And it's crazy being able to play a deck where you can just put some energy on the back knowing it's completely safe. Obviously, Zoroark decks are the most scary because they have both Muck to turn off Blizzard Veil, but also Lycanroc can get around it as well. So that's a matchup where this guy, you have to treat very carefully about putting him down. Often we're trying to just recycle Onyx in that matchup. They're going to put down another Tina. <clears throat> going to start recharging to it, but it is pretty much game. Now that he's filled his board...
So we have everything we need in hand already to win the game. Gotta go fast if we want to get it before the concede. There we go. <laughs> Four big old prizes from our whale. Nice. Good feeling. Good feeling. Like I said, Malamar's one of the matchups that we want to see the most. Of the top tier stuff, at least. Blacephalon's also pretty reasonable. We don't play bands, though, so it's not as good as you would think. Still reasonable though. You actually attack with Blastoise in that matchup. If you're a real man. Do you have a mole? To kick things off. A few other supporters I've thought about. Erica's Hospitality is one of them, but Crash Awake is actually a supporter I've also thought about having in the deck. Just because we naturally draw into so many energies early on. But Wake is oftentimes a live target. We get the nice Articuno start again. We'll always be happy with that. We'll also get to go get to go first, which is also good. We see another Jirachi. Okay. We've got a pretty good turn one Lily Hand. Putting down Lele is a little awkward because it's the only thing not protected by the Blizzard Veil. But keeping this hand seems really strong. As long as we can find a brooklet or an ultra ball or something, this hand is going to be strong. Also, an attachment would be fine. We find those things, which is great. Squirtle and Articuno coming down sounds good. Against some decks, especially Jirachi-based decks, they have the potential to knock out an Articuno turn one. So we want to defend ourselves against that. And just attach to the bench and pass. Oh. Oh. What is this? What is this deck? That's the question. Vulpix and Shrine. Oh, it's Charizard. Hmm. Charizard... Should be a pretty good matchup. That's not how that works. Well, they had the switch in hand anyway. They're going to beacon. Unfortunately, we got rid of a Guzma in our opening hand, so we can't just deal with this guy and feel good about ourselves. Is Jet Geyser stronger than... Yeah, Jet Geyser seems strong. It draws us more cards off Lily as well. Denying him a Jirachi sounds good. There's not much we want to draw into here, because our board is so full. All we drew into was stuff we'd love to power squall. Uh, so it feels like Magic Cup and Warlord isn't going to be too huge until late. It feels like it's a late game play for us. We can just pound through. If we do a Volcanion Sauna Blast that sets up an Articuno to knock out future... Charizards because of weakness. So we can just keep a Volk Articuno like combo rolling. Should be fine. Let's see the continuous blaze ball taking the knockout. Back. No. We want space for more Squirtles. I think we're just going to do this. I'll power school after the Cynthia because there's so many waters. <laughs> it's 
still drawing to a good amount of waters. Uh, one of the reasons why the recyclers are so good in the deck that we can basically get free ultra balls and jet geysers. Start loading him up a little, just a little for now. This is already insane pressure from us. Seeing as they have a two card hand and one's random from a prize. They're gonna go back into their Bulbix. Choice band, a skateboard. Lily for six, not bad, not bad. They're back in it, maybe. More Jirachis. Com for another Charmander. And just a beacon. They're going to grab Charmeleon and Charizard. That's a pretty big deal. Get rid of that quickly. Squall. I'm just thinking how good Jet Geyser is here. I think we just want to rush this. They're going to go into their Jirachi. Stella Wish. The fact that they didn't Brooklet Hill means maybe they don't have. Maybe they just play one Vulpix. Or they're just worried about Towering Splash. That's also very reasonable. Lots of tools going everywhere and a Guzma trying to stall us by the looks of things. So we only play two Guzma in the deck, but our main out to uh, this is just squalling <laughs> energy. It's not the first time someone's tried to bring up a big stois. Oh, it's a whip though. They've bought themselves a turn. That's definitely happening. And a pass. I think we're still in the ascendancy here. The hand is exactly Charizard. We do have a Guzma for next turn. They get themselves a Lily, which is nice. Another top deck. Pog. They're going to stretch her. For Zard number two. He can attach to the back, Candy Zard the front, and go for a Roaring Resolve. Oh, he can Nest Ball first. Just does 130 to us. If he had attached to the active, he could have taken a knockout. We're going to school some more. I'm slightly concerned about this getting knocked out. 
I guess I just do this. Whale is nice and safe when there's an Articuno up front. Twelve of our energy are currently on the board. We're going to see a Roaring Resolve from Charizard one more time. They are also playing Energy Recycler. Makes sense in both of our decks. We can get five nice. And I just noticed that he has loads of these Heart Gold, Soul Silver energies busted. So we're going to retreat Recycler and hope that we can uh, hit an energy. From two power schools. Six energy in deck. 16 card deck, we should get there. Another towering splash for game. Not bad, not bad. I mean, against the Charizard deck, we're always going to be pretty favoured. We're blue, at least. Let's get one more game in with this fun deck. So far, everything's looking pretty rosy. <laughs> we haven't faced the Zoroark stuff. Haven't faced Jolteon. And when that happens, the deck looks like amazing. <laughs> Looks amazing, right? Unstoppable. Maybe. We shall see. Oh, I'm up against my buddy Jake. Hi, Jake. We're both going to a cup tomorrow. I imagine I'll be playing something different to what I'm playing right now. Ah, oh, the sad start, the sad boys. Good hand though. Anytime you see a supporter, you're just like, oh, this hand's fine. <laughs> Basically with this deck. We see a Jirachi and it's Stella Wishing. For an S-Ball, maybe this will give us an indication if he's Zapdos-based or if he's Picaron. Could be either. More Jirachis tells us nothing. <laughs> we always like seeing lots of Jirachi on the board, though, because they're towering splash prizes. If we can ever get the luxury of using it. They're also early game Articuno prizes. Overall, seeing Jirachis is good for this deck. That's for sure. Blitzel. So they're probably Zapdos. Okay. A Coco. A Tapu Coco. What is he playing? Pissimian? No. Well, we'll have to find out. Regardless, we're just going Squirtle. When you start the whale, you have to just go Squirtle crazy. You just ignore that Articuno exists in your deck and say, I need to get the whale rolling quick as pos. Mm. 
very, very scary plan when you're up against lightning decks, because they play Coco GX. <laughs> very scary plan. But it's the only plan we got when we start this guy. Normally, he's nice and safe on the bench, chilling, leaning back. Letting energy just get slapped onto him willy-nilly. But when when he's up front, you got to get get a move on with the guy. Yeah, he's playing Simeon, and he's filled his bench pretty, pretty wide. I'm not going to be killing any of these things. Lord might be okay here. Maybe. He's going to grab a Guzma off Stella Wish. His bench seriously filled up pretty quick, huh? See, Ultra Ball. See, the thing about this is, all the spread isn't going to mean much because we're not going to, like, take prizes to give him Fairy Lele. His entire board can uh, currently uh, get knocked out by a Wellord into a Magikarp, or a Magikarp in, sorry, not a Wellord into a Magikarp, uh, a Volk into a Whale. He's going to Guzma just to move his Jirachi by the looks of things. Gonna do this stuff. Gonna squall. Just one energy is a little bit sad. I was hoping to get a sauna blast off. Currently, I don't see much reason not to attach to him though. Hmm. We know he doesn't currently have a pivot card, so if I was to Jack Geyser... Yeah, I'm just giving him more Stellowish though. Am I retreating into Articuno here? I really want to Sauna Blast next turn. Hmm. What am I retreating into this? He could still be playing a Zapdos. That's, that's the only concern about promoting this. He just free retreat, attach Zapdos, and kill. That's the thing I'm most scared of. So I'm going to chicken out and just put that there. <laughs> hmm. Because the Volk is a big part of our win condition here. Otherwise, we don't do anything. <laughs> we need that guy. Yeah, see, there's the Zapdos. Ah, ah, big brain. Big brain plays. None of that. None of that here. Oh, I should have definitely known that because there was lightning energy as well. Whoops. Should have been an easy choice. I just didn't even realize this earlier. Hmm. Thinking face. Okay. Fight Jet Geyser, what does he promote? Just promotes Simeon just to retreat him. We'll see what he does. This is an extra energy in the discard to make our energy recyclers live as well. Oh, he's giving us the prize. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, 
I guess giving us the prize is the freebie, right? He's he knows it'll get knocked out by this anyway, so may as well. It also does open up counter energy for him. To do his dirty work with counter energy, um, Fairy Lele. So you haven't seen Ultra Ball. What's he want to grab though? <clears throat> Just another Coco by the looks of things. He does bench it, so now one Sauna Blast, one Towering Splash is just game for us. As long as we can do that before, he does Fairy Lele shenanigans. So our priorities are to find a counter stadium and to attack two times. Those are our only priorities. That's not finding a way to evolve his squirt is a little bit awkward. Actually, it's probably good for us because it turns off the counter energy again. Yeah, so stopping them doing that is actually the best thing possible. Maybe this was genius. Hidden genius. Punish the flying flip. He's going to take two prizes regardless. Okay. But it does just shut off the counter energy, right? So now we just attack with this, and we just got to build towards a big whale. Easy. Easy, right? Easy peasy. I'm going to stretch a back squirtle. Quick calming away this as well. Doesn't seem all that good. Because we're literally just building towards a big well lord, I want to get another squirtle down, I think. Let's squall and see where we get to. Energy number five. Energy number six. And we'll just sauna blast. So he needs to hit two hundred on our magic up this turn somehow. Next time we probably Recycler, Lele for Bill, Squall. No, we probably go Lele, Bill, play Bill, then Recycler, Squall, Squall, if the Bill gets us candy. We only, play, we only have one more candy in deck. Hmm. We're actually not super close. This is a weird one. We could try and like make our one school very strong, or we could try and get two schools going. That's like our two options. This is all assuming that he can't Coco GX knock out our whale, in which case it's like, well, see you later. Gonna put down the prism and then just retreat into a Jirachi. Two Ultra Balls down. Only one Lightning Energy currently in this card pile. Gonna see an escape rope from him. Now we see an Ultra Ball. Don't want to see another lightning go to the discard. Uh-oh. This could be trouble. Just a fail search, though. Maybe still in trouble, though. <laughs> oh. 
electro power. Is he just sprinting? Plays a switch. Already has rope in hand. No, just a flying flip. Okay. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, six. Okay, so this is happening. Bills for candy would be pretty pog. No rare candy, but we're just pulling cards out of the deck, though, to improve our power score anyway. So if we can't candy, we're just going to grab a war turtle. So we currently have two in an 18-card deck. We'll then have six in an 18-card deck. We need to hit two. Oops. We're all in. Power school. Go. Oh, I could have got an extra energy in. Whoops. Power school. Go. No. No. The betrayal. Dude, that's not the one. Yikes. Oh, I missed an energy as well. That's so dumb. I could have had an extra energy. <sighs> Whoops. 170. If I retreat, we go down to... Hmm. I've already retreated. I can't even retreat. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> it's my own fault, though. We could have got an extra energy in with Jack Geyser. Coco GX. Okay. <laughs> Whoops. moment when you're not dead. Hello? Guzman's back. Okay. We can sprint. Just flying flip. There we go. We finally did it. 
too scary, man. Too scary. Well, we won three games with Towering Splash. Feels good. We just about got over the line. Three good matchups, admittedly, but the deck did what it was supposed to do eventually in that third game. <laughs> we got there in the end. <laughs> Pretty kooky. All right, that's going to be Blastoise Wear Lord. Definitely a lot of fun. Um, let me know what you guys think about the build and where would you place this on a tier list? Is it being slept on right now or is it just, you know, PCGO fun times? I'd like to hear it all down below. Let me know what other decks you want to see from me as well. For now, though, it has been Joe from Omnipoke, and I'll see you guys in another video tomorrow. Cheers.